Watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have uh, another Chinese watch at this time uh, provided from uh, Li Gei or Liege, I don't really know how to say it and uh, they haven't got Chinese uh, alliteration for me uh, to translate. Uh, this one is an homage piece and I wasn't sure whether I was going to actually do a full review or just pop it into a comparison video but I found out some interesting things about this piece which made me happy enough to provide a separate review because uh, I think there are some points that are worth uh, you know, bringing up about this piece that sets it slightly apart from the other homage in the market. So, you know, the watch comes in fairly tacky packaging, right? It's a cheap cardboard box. You know, surprise, surprise, that's, uh, you know, to be expected in this price range. But, you know, let's just flip it around and take a closer look at what's in here. All right, guys, so here we have the package on the table, uh, cheap cardboard packaging, which has already gotten damaged in transit. But I tell you what, you know, as always, a lot of these Chinese ones, superb spinability. That's pretty much a five out of five or close to it, four and a half at least, I reckon. Right, gold trim to make it look even more tacky. Uh, yeah, otherwise it's just this matte cardboard, right? Uh, oh, right, I'll have to show you uh, inside here, uh, spare links which I've removed, uh, a warranty card as if you would ever get to use that effectively. Uh, there's a cleaning cloth and a tag, which is not even attached to the watch, interestingly. All right, let's just open the bracelet here and show you the watch in closer detail. So guys, what we have here is the Liege or Liege, how would you say Liege, I suppose? Submariner Hulk, this is what I'm calling this watch. Uh, the model number is LG6801 uh, and all links to products and website down below as I'm able to find it. Uh, usually this is available for 75 USD. I'm not sure if it sometimes goes on sale even uh, deeper uh, than that in terms of pricing, but that's what it currently is as I looked it up. All right, so first up, as usual, guys, let's talk about movement. So movement in here, uh, it's, it's interesting. I had to kind of do a bit of digging around here because audibly you can hear that it beats at 28,800 uh, beats per hour. That's actually very apparent. And of course, it comes up on the time grapher as well. Uh, I have uh, reviewed uh, DG movements before. This one, I think... I think it's a DG4813, or at least it's something very much like it. My understanding is many different factories are doing this movement now. They may not be official DG, uh, but it has the same architecture. And I put the stats down the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, it does have a quick set date. In this case, it's uh, mounted at the 3 o'clock classic Submariner position. Black number on white disc that you can see there. Uh, quick set date, hacking usual abilities uh, that you can see in the three-hander movement like this. Uh, of course, I do not know anything about the rated accuracy, but in actual use, this is running about 14 seconds per day, kind of within you know rated accuracy of, say, a Seiko NH35. Okay. So that's the, the movement. Let's move on. Let's talk about the case. So in this case, it is actually 40.5 millimeters by calipers. That's the diameter uh, kind of of the, the case as well as the bezel. All right, 40.5, not just 40. Uh, 316 L steel, it does feel like that. It doesn't feel like a base plated or chromed uh, you know, metal alloy or anything like that. It does actually feel like 316L and they stated it's 316L in multiple different listings. Uh, 12.5 millimeters is the thickness here, uh, 20 millimeter lug width and a lug to lug distance between my thumbs there of 47 millimeters. Uh, overall weight uh, with those number of links uh, removed on this bracelet is 139 grams, which is kind of what you expect uh, in a Chinese watch uh, of this type of shape and size. Right, let's talk about finishing. So. It's got a brush and polished bezel, so hopefully you can appreciate the top surface of the bezel there is polished and then it transitions to brushing on the side, that coinage, uh, you know, oyster style, Rolex style uh, bezel. Longitudinal brushing on the top, transitioning to polished on the sides, that's of course what most Submariner style cases will do. And then in this case, it's gone to circular brushing uh, for the bottom of the case there. The display case back, you know, screw down display case back there is polished finish. 
and you can see the, the movement through the display case there. It does actually have a, a screw down crown in this case signed with their logo there. Uh, and the water rating they've stipulated is 100 meters. So, you know, hopefully it does hold up that it's good enough to go swimming. Uh, the, you know, no, no manufacturer usually warrants uh, a watch to go scuba diving at 100 meters, but, but hopefully this will hold up uh, to swimming. It's winter here, so I haven't actually taken this swimming, but, you know, I, I do wear my watches in the shower. I can report that this at least holds up to a shower. All right, let's talk about the dial now. Okay, so hopefully you can appreciate that in you know the, the light falling on the dial as well as the macro shots that this is a sunburst green dial. It's got a raised logo, probably not applied. It's kind of raised on the surface there. Uh, otherwise, it's got printed details of the brand name, you know, the uh, water resistant rating down the bottom as well as the chapter ring around the periphery. Applied, uh, so you know, Submariner Maxi dial style indices is what this has. Polished Mercedes handset, of course, right? So Mercedes hour hand, lollipop seconds and whatnot. Uh, the loom in this case is blue in color, uh, and it is on most spots, uh, but for some reason the bezel pip is either defective or missed out on this watch. It doesn't actually glow. Um, and then I'll put a loom shot for you guys to see how it looks like in the dark. Uh, it's relatively poor. It doesn't last through the night. By any means, kind of like you know many other Chinese watches like Pagani and whatnot. All right, so on top uh, or surrounding the dial is a 60 click unidirectional dive style bezel with a ceramic insert. Right, of course, copied uh, markings and design here. Let's hear it now. Okay, five. And yes, you will notice that it doesn't line up, unfortunately. Okay, so let's just take it back here and show you. Right, I'm gonna go to there, there. And that kind of is still slightly to the right of the marker, right, in my eye at least, or actually probably gone past, actually, it's probably more to the left now. So it doesn't actually line up, unfortunately, 60 click, and that's a little bit more tricky to fluke a line up, unfortunately. All right, on top of the dial, a flat sapphire crystal with a, of course, a copied Cyclops magnifier, which uh, in this case, uh, not surprisingly, does not line up perfectly and also does not magnify the full 2.5 times that it's supposed to. That's more like a two times magnification to my eye. It definitely doesn't compare with a more properly magnifying Cyclops. Hopefully you guys can appreciate that uh, as I show you this on these, these shots here. Okay, so that's the, the uh, crystal as well as the entire case description. Uh, just beware that certain uh, descriptors may list this crystal as sapphire. Some may list it as hard uh, This one is sapphire. So I'm not sure whether there's variations in product floating out there. There probably is not surprising that there might be. All right, let's talk about the bracelet, which is, uh, of course, three-piece Berlink oyster style. In this case, they've gone for full brush on the top, uh, transitioning to polish on the sides. And one good thing is screw links, right? They've actually pushed to put screw links in here, solid end links at the, you know, at the uh, ends there, and a clasp that is fairly solid, right? Uh, this trip lock style clasp with uh, a part that opens like this, but that's, that sticks, right? That doesn't spring back as it's you know, supposed to. Fairly solid arms and fairly nice feeling here, right? Uh, and, and that you know, keeper there. Uh, I will say it does have a comfort extension here, but this is this is very this is very loose and shoddy. You know, as I as I try to adjust it, you can see as I, you know, it's kind of that spring bar is popping out here. So I'm not gonna try to open it because the whole thing will just pop out, and that's what it's done. So and it feels quite insecure. I think when you close it, it's all right but I, I, I'm very uncertain about the, the fit, the, the tightness of that spring bar. You know, it's got those micro adjust holes there. Hopefully you can see those holes there on the clasp. Uh, you know, it feels like you don't want to change it around because it may just pop out in your hand. All right, guys, so there we go, the entire description. Let's just pop it on uh, for a wrist shot now. And there we go, right? Rolex Submariner style on 17 centimeter wrist like mine fits fine. I reckon you know, look at the how the 
the lug sit, it sits fine, a 47 in this case, so slightly off kilter, not exactly the 48 of Rolex, 40.5 uh, in terms of diameter, a watch like this sits fine on my wrist, and that's how that bracelet sits there. Okay, so there we go. Now, overall then, what do I think about this? Well, look, I think the Chinese have pushed it again, haven't they, right? Uh, putting in sapphire ceramic, a 28800 beat movement in this case. Uh, so it's not a Seiko or Seiko clone, it's a DG movement. Uh, they seem to be okay, but long-term reliability, uh, let me know if you guys know more about these movements, but it is a 28800 movement. That's what they've really managed to achieve here. Uh, they've achieved 100 meter water resistant on this casing, solid end with you know a good bracelet, right? Like it's it's got the screws, it's got uh, an attempt at a trip lock case, even though the QC is questionable, right? They, they really have managed to fit a lot in here, asking for seventy five dollars. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, though this is not. Uh, perfect and uh, not uh, superbly recommendable I would say lots of QC issues I've mentioned already uh, right the uh, bezel feel right there is back play on that it's only 60 click and the alignment is off the clasp release uh, I've showed you that it's sticky right it's, it's a bit sticky here the extension bar fit is very bad that feels like you can just pull it off with your fingers in fact I can just pull it off uh, with my with my hands here you don't need a tool the fit is not good. Uh, the Cyclops I've mentioned does not line up and many of these watches don't line up. You know, that's not surprising to me at all. The loom is really only nominal. It really doesn't last. It's almost like they put it in there so that they can say there is loom, but there's no attempt to make it last for hours. Definitely doesn't last through the night. And the finishing floors, um, you know, what, what do you expect, right? For a $70 watch, right? It's wavy. Uh, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, right? The flaws are immediately evident, but you know, they will be on a $75 watch. That, that's really not what I'm expecting uh, in this watch, at least you know, in, a, in a distance, you're not gonna pick on it. If you go close up with a naked eye, you can see the flaws, right? And then Chinese companies, so don't expect any warranty service here. You know, it's a bonus if they do respond to you, but most of them will not. And you have to put up with tacky marketing if you read their website, right? You know, stuff like time, precious, value, style. You know, you are only worth it, man, in universe. You know, that's tacky, tacky stuff like that uh, if you choose to read their marketing. All right, guys, there you go. My review of this Lige homage. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys. My review of the Lige Submariner Hulk uh, watch. You know, definitely a flawed piece, right? No, nothing too surprising about that at the price range. You're gonna expect some flaws, but I think they've, they've packed in some fairly interesting and compelling features, particularly that interesting high beat movement uh, from a DG or a DG clone. Let me know what you guys think about this piece, particularly if you have any experience with uh, Liege uh, or, or Liege, you know, this company. This is the first piece I've had from them. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.